Welcome to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast, where it's all about helping you complete your financial journey to retirement. Discover time-tested strategies and get unconventional insights into wealth building and retirement that actually work. Break away from the herd and go for the retirement you dream of. And now, here's your host, the income engineer, Craig Strom. All right, that's me back on Personal Pension Radio. Yes, I am Craig Strom, Craig with a K at craigstrom.com. Great to be back on Personal Pension Radio. Always love it. Thank you so much. We get some great emails and uh, feedback. Really appreciate all that. Love the opportunity. If you're interested, we can actually have a meeting. It doesn't really matter where you are in the United States. Technology today allows us to meet uh, as we're as if we're already uh, basically in the same room. Love webinars and video meetings and conferences with folks all over the country. It is really, really cool. My mission is to pull back the curtain on this mainstream financial advice so you can ask questions that are just right for you. Questions that are generally not presented well by Wall Street. The Wall Street financial advisory machine is incomplete when it comes to teaching retirement education. Most advisors today were educated by that same machine that taught me the same messaging and the same information that has been taught for 30 or 40 years. And there's a handful of financial planners out there who have broken away to say, wait a minute, is that the only way that it can be done? And the answer is no, that is not the only way that it can be done. The idea of busting this conventional wisdom, this idea that the answer to retirement is invest, 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 invest. That's not right. The true answer to maximum retirement income, to optimizing retirement, is a combination, an engineered approach to investments, life insurance, 401ks, real estate, annuities, Roth IRAs. None of those things by themselves will optimize retirement income. You must have an engineered approach, a designed approach. That's the key. That's my passion. That's my specialty. I design retirement income plans that run 60 to 90% above what a typical Wall Street-only plan will get you. If you want to know what that looks like for you, send me an email, craig at craigstrom.com. Now, quick disclosure, I am not an attorney. I am not a CPA. I am a certified financial planner professional. But all that said, don't act on things that you hear on my show as if you're hearing advice for you personally. Especially, please don't act on financial uh, entertainer's advice. Good night. People who are not even licensed or regulated by anyone looking out for the general public. People with a microphone nowadays, of course, free speech. You can say whatever you want for the most part. It's amazing that people can give out financial advice, sometimes life-altering financial advice, and have no licensing whatsoever to do so. And the regulators are stuck with, well, I guess that's your First Amendment right to do so. But if, if I do that, I lose my job, right? So I'm telling you, folks, please meet with a qualified financial planner, somebody who's really in it with you, where he or she has been trained and is giving you the time necessary to really help you flush out, flesh out all of the details necessary to make good recommendations, all right? Now, I've got another deal of the week. Yes, another deal of the week. Uh, I had a recent trip to Oakland, California for a speaking engagement. I am uh, blessed to be invited to speak at at places uh, sometimes all around the country, from Florida to Oakland. Who knows, right? And this time I was speaking uh, for a large group uh, in in the real estate industry in Oakland, and I needed to be up there for just one night. And down, because Oakland is north of where I live, so up and down. Now, looking around for places near where I was actually going to be speaking, the prices for an overnight stay were ridiculous. Uh, As much as $250 per night. And I'm not a fancy person. I just need a bed. But some of the places were just ridiculous. So, Airbnb. 
So I went to Airbnb and found a wonderful little home, a little room in a home, right seven minutes walking distance from my meeting location. And they have she uh, the hostess. Her name's Peggy. She had a really cute little puppy dog. Uh, my wife and I miss our dog. We had to say goodbye to him a month ago, and we just miss him. And so Peggy has this cutest little puppy dog and this enormous cat. And I got to you know have my animal fix it and um, play with them. You know, as the evening went down and the sun went down, it was a beautiful, beautiful night. And then seven minute walk in the morning to my meeting location. And I had gotten there with an Uber, so I didn't need to rent a car. So I saved money with that. So I went for a $110 overnight stay in a nice neighborhood with a wonderful hostess, cute puppy, friendly cat. And I saved $140 on just that one part of my trip. That's a deal. I love it. Now, don't forget, uh, last episode I did a short stuff segment. If you haven't listened to the last episode, a quick short stuff segment, new on the show, uh, that um, talked about junk uh, that you think your family might want to inherit, but as it turns out, eh, they may not be as interested in it as you think. Uh, Check that quick uh, short stuff episode out. Uh, you might like that. Now, today, I'm actually going to jump right to a big deal in segment one. Just a quick touch on this, right? Beware of the hype. Well, this is watch your step. For those of you who are new to the show, the first segment is watch your step. Watch your step is this idea that there is so much content flying out of uh, the various Wall Street marketing machines. Uh, there's webs, webinars, there's blogs, there's printed magazines, there's online magazines, there's TV shows, there's cable TV shows, there's internet shows. The idea is that content is constant. It is just constant, constant barrage, right? So I want you to really just watch out for this stuff because the news, these, these news entities are so hungry for content that they'll just publish basically anything, right? I mean, basically anything. If it has, you know, some semblance of a well-written article, it doesn't really matter what it is, they'll publish it, right? Got to remind you, just beware of this. Hype, hype, hype around things like Tesla selling more cars than Mercedes, Well, that sounds so exciting, right? I mean, that's an awesome headline. Tesla sells more cars than Mercedes-Benz? Oh, my gosh. And if you look, Forbes, Wall Street Journal, um, the uh, U.S. News, uh, money everywhere has this headline. Tesla sells more cars than Mercedes. By the way... Remember, I'm a car guy. I am a car nut. So this is what this comes up on my radar for sure. And I get all excited. So yes, I got sucked in. I clicked on the headline in Forbes. Tesla sells more cars than Mercedes. Well, what should we do? We should, should we just, we should just get excited about that. Tesla's doing so, you know what? Hogwash, absolute rubbish hogwash. In my, in my mind, that article is one paragraph long. Tesla sells more cars than Mercedes. So what? They lose money on every single car they sell. You know what? If you open a restaurant next to the best restaurant in your town and you lose money on every single entree that you serve, even if it's not the greatest service, and you just sell it so cheap that the best restaurant next door looks overpriced, it's entirely possible that your sales might surpass the best restaurant in town, right? I mean, that's just normal. That's what's going to happen. If you sell your product at below cost, you lose money every single time you sell a widget, Other widget makers might not sell as many widgets as you, but you know what they're doing? Those other widget makers, aka Mercedes-Benz, they're making a profit 
They're actually making a profit. So here's the part that I'm, I'm cautioning you about. Watch your step. Beware of the hype, right? This news flash comes across, and wow, that's big news. You know what? It's not big news. And people like myself who might be cynical, who might also be in the financial world a bit, look at that and go, so what? But sometimes folks who are just good, solid, average Americans out there thinking, where should I invest? What should I do with my Robin Hood account? Right? Ooh, wow. Tesla surpassed Mercedes. Maybe I should invest in Tesla. I don't know if you should. I'm not saying you should or should not invest in Tesla. But beware of the hype. Because if you do a search for Tesla loses money, just Tesla loses money, and you just search that phrase in Google, you will have just countless articles that are peppered all over the place about how Tesla loses money and bleeds money. Just is a, just a terribly, terribly loss-prone company, right? that maybe you might second guess yourself if you were thinking about, hey, should I invest in that particular company? But no, the news flash just flooded across the airwaves was, ooh, they surpassed Mercedes-Benz and the number of cars they sold. So what? Please, remember, the Wall Street marketing machine controls the message, controls that they spend billions and billions of dollars in total, on advertising, they control the outlets. So the information you hear is definitely skewed towards invest, 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 always. That's my take on it. Now, in the next segment, I want to share something a, a great listener, uh, uh, Lynn, uh, Lisa, uh, sent in a question Right. And I, I actually just really appreciate actually she sh sent in a comment that she wanted to share her personal observation. And I, I just think it's something that uh, really touched me and I super, super appreciated it. Uh, so let me go through this here. Uh, what Lisa sent. Craig, li uh, Lisa says, Craig, I've been listening to your show for a few months now and I wanted to share my personal story about how cash value insurance touched my life. I never used to listen to or read financial stuff until my husband passed away. He was diagnosed with stage four cancer two years ago and died in January last year. My husband used to take care of the finances, so I was overwhelmed with questions about what to do. Thankfully, my husband had purchased a universal life insurance policy that still had a death benefit when he died at age 67. I'm sorry, that's just tough. That is really tough. Lisa goes on to say, with our kids grown and out of the house, our term insurance had long since elapsed, but the cash value policy was meant to go on forever. Forever did not happen. My husband said that he had purchased the policy so that I would not have to worry about money if he was gone first. The policy my dear husband purchased was a godsend. My Social Security benefits were cut by over $1,800 per month. But the life insurance gave me the financial cushion I needed to be perfectly fine. When I heard you talk about Dave Ramsey... And his advice to never buy cash value life insurance, I was almost angry and had to write to you. Dave Ramsey does not live in the real world. The cash value insurance that my husband left for me was a blessing. Thank you again, Craig, for your show and making me smile when I thought back to my sweet husband. Wow. Thank you. And now I've read that already. And then I read it again just now. And I got chills again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that follow up. Because that's what I say to folks all the time. That cash value life insurance, life insurance that is meant to be there permanently forever is exactly that. It is the ultimate love note to people you care about. It is leaving behind financial security in a time when emotions are just 
running high, when depression could be a factor, when the last thing you possibly want to deal with is financial stress, permanent cash value life insurance is there. It, it is truly that, that love note from a family member that allows people to not have to worry about that one aspect of losing someone. I really appreciate it, Lisa. Thank you so much for that feedback. I really, really appreciate it. Now, folks, when I looked at my feedback and my questions and what I was going to cover on this episode, I couldn't help it. Today is going to be that feedback day that just sort of blends in together with a common theme because I also got a message from Linda that Linda actually felt compelled to follow up with me directly because she also heard one of my recent episodes, rants, if you will, about Dave Ramsey's really bad pension advice. And Linda felt compelled to write me, and thank you so much, Linda, for doing so. And Linda says this. She says, I just finished listening, listening to your podcast this morning, Retirement math doesn't work. Great advice, she says. Love the exclamation point, by the way, uh, Linda. Fantastic. The question Dave Ramsey doesn't ask before giving his advice to cash out a pension, which Linda says is careless, is this. Does your pension cash out affect any other employer benefits? Linda goes on to say that my personal pension includes health care for long, for life along, excuse me, let me get my tongue straight. Linda says my personal pension includes health care for life along with a number of other benefits. If I had cashed out, my former employer would have disengaged all affiliation. No longer would she get or would I get the cost of living each year. No longer would I get the health care. This is a substantial consideration. Linda goes on to say, I live in Encinitas, California. I worked 32 years at UC San Diego Health. 32 years. Way to go, Linda. I'm receiving a pension that is 85% of my highest three years. My pension not only includes health care for life, but discounts on travel with the UC Retirement Association. That's amazing. And she finishes by saying another option that she would, that I was offered is taking less monthly pension with a rider that my spouse could continue my benefits in case of my death. I am a widow. So of course I did not take that route. I would have been nuts to take the cash out benefit. In 15 years, I will have been paid what they offered in the cash out. Hear that, folks. Linda was offered a cash out. What did I say on that last episode when I talked about the retirement math doesn't work? The pension companies only offer cash outs because it is more valuable to give you a big chunk of cash to them. It's less costly to them. So let me finish Linda's thought here that her, she finishes with. I would been, she says, I would have been nuts to take the cash out. In 15 years, I will have been paid what they offered me in the cash out. Plus, not to worry about increased health care costs. I'm 67 and my mother is 97. She finishes by saying, I did the math. I love you, Linda. Thank you for doing the math. Cashing out a pension is almost always a terrible idea. It's a great idea for the pension company. Terrible idea for the pensioner who's going to give up the benefit. Even if they don't have these golden, wonderful benefits like we have here in California, you know, unlimited health care and all that great stuff, cashing out a pension is almost always a terrible idea. Dave Ramsey is crazy forever recommending 
anything other than stop the presses, go talk to a financial planner, a really good financial planner, right? Go talk to a financial planner first. Do not, do not, do not cash out your pension before you really sit down with a certified financial planner professional. I would encourage you to pick one that is not necessarily a shill paying to be on Dave Ramsey's endorsed financial professionals list, right? They pay money, remember, when Dave Ramsey recommends a financial advisor, it's not because he knows, you know, Bob or Ted from Wisconsin. It's because they pay him cash money to be on his list of approved providers. That's how it works, folks. Linda, I love you. I love your comment. Lisa, thank you so much as well for sharing your story. Folks, I am a huge fan of cash value life insurance. Big fan. But remember, always remember, it is not this golden answer to everything. There are a lot of financial professionals out there that may not be certified financial advisors, it's uh, professionals and such, that are pitching life insurance as if it is the solution to everything. It is not. Life insurance done right in a financial plan is an awesome component of a well-constructed retirement income plan, life insurance is a great piece of that mix. Really is. But don't get sold on this idea that it's somehow the best thing since forever and this is all you should have. If you have been pitched on life insurance or if you've been told that cash value life insurance is wrong or you're not sure if it's right or wrong, send me an email, craig at craigstrom.com and please keep that feedback coming. I really appreciate it. Craig at CraigStrom.com. Love it. Really, again, thank you so much for that. Remember, one of my big New Year's resolutions is to help you get your estate planning done, to get your life, your living trust done, to get your will and your powers of attorney done. I have made a special arrangement with my law firm for my listeners to have access to a truly great price from an awesome law firm. So please, before you put it off any longer, send me an email, craig at craigstrom.com, estate plan in your subject line. Let's get your living trust done. Remember my advice on living trust. If you like and love your children, get a living trust. If you don't like your kids, if you don't like your grandkids, don't get a living trust. Because probate and settling your estate is a nightmare, and that's a good way to stick it to him in the end. Now, of course, folks, I know that's not how you feel. You love your children. You love, love your grandchildren. Dear goodness me, if you already have a living trust and it's more than five years old and it hasn't been updated, please send me an email. If you don't have one at all, you have no power of attorney, no will, nothing, send me an email. Let's get that done. I am here to help. Folks, once again, love it. I am the income engineer. Please keep your questions and your feedback and your wonderful stories coming. Thank you so much. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Personal Pension Radio podcast. We took notes for you, so if you missed any part of the show, you can find a full transcript of each episode at personalpensionradio.com. Be sure to download your free retirement income crisis report at personalpensionradio.com. While you're at it, we would appreciate some iTunes love. Please leave us a fantastic rating on iTunes by going to personalpensionradio forward slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening. Now for the disclosure. Information presented is for educational purposes only and is not intended for solicitation, sale or purchase of any security or financial product. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and your tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed here. The term personal pension refers to a marketing name designed to educate future retirees and retirees about the economic principles behind creating their own pension like income. The term personal pension is not intended to be confused with a defined benefit pension plan offered by an employer or by a government entity.